My name is Adriana, and this is Many Roads, No Rules. I don't plan ahead what road I will take next, because I want those roads to find me, so I find myself. Please join me on this new adventure. Hello there. So, as you know, as I have said many times already, I am in courtside for the RTR, and that is the uh, Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. You are probably familiar with Bob Wells. He has been promoting this idea of living free, living cheap. Cheap RVing is his main website. Um, he, together with some of his friends, founded the Hawa Homes on Wheels Alliance. And they, they do a lot of many good things for nomads. Many good things. It's amazing. When you start learning about that, it, it is absolutely amazing. It calls your attention how many things they do and how dedicated they are to the idea and the community. So, the RTR happens in January, and it's about a week or so, and there are classes, things they give you, information they share. So, if you want to be a nomad, you can either attend the RTRs in, uh, online, or you can come here to Courtside and do it in person. And that is what I decided to do since I have been watching Bob Wells' videos for years. So I decided, okay, I want to be there. Many of you may be familiar with the movie Nomadland. I didn't like it, honestly. Uh, Bob is shown there in the movie and some other nomads. I didn't like it because this woman, she has this crisis, a horrible situation. She has to drop everything. I mean, everything is taken away from her. And as a last resource, she gets this van and she starts adapting kind of by force to this type of life. The whole movie is made with a blue dark light to reflect how she felt, the cold, the fear. And that, I mean, the movie and the actress, they were very nice. What I didn't like is the fact that they portray the life of nomads as people who are desperate, people who have lost everything and are one little step away from ending their lives or things like that. It is a very dark, depressing mood throughout the movie. And again, the movie, I think it's very well done, but that is not the spirit of the nomad community. In my case, I chose to live like this. I could have stayed where I was. I had a comfortable chair and a big screen, and I could watch all my movies and my shows and go visit friends and get together with them to have a coffee. That was not the point. I wanted to do some sort of a touristic nomading type of thing. So yes, I want to go see places. I had been to the Grand Canyon and I, am, I cannot wait to be there again, which is going to be very soon, hopefully. But there are so many things to see out there. I really wanted to be on the road because I enjoy driving. Out here in nature, because I was not going out in Minnesota, you know, for six months you don't get out of the house. It's very cold. I wanted to be here in nature. I wanted to go places. I wanted to try different cuisines, different scenarios for everything. And I have to tell you more about food because I have had a blast 
for a long time now. So the reason why I disagree with the movie is they show all nomads as a lost cause. And I don't see us that way. And when you go to the RTR, you are face to face with a, an amazing community and the love is there. I mean, everybody there loves being a nomad. Everybody is happy because when you become a nomad, you have a lot of time to do nothing. And that is good for the spirit. It's very good for the spirit. You know, the name of my channel is Many Roads, No Rules. Just because of that, I was up to here with the rules of society, with the things we have to do every day, a thousand times a day, we have to do this or that. I was tired of that. It was very stressful for me. And I am so happy now. So we all have sad days, of course. We all have a day when our tummy hurts, of course. But being free, being able to go on the road every day or not, that is such a blessing. That is such a good thing we can do. So when you come to the RTR, you see all these people who think the same way, who enjoy the same things, and who enjoy nomadic life the same way because of the same reasons. So I, I strongly recommend, if you're planning on having this life, come in January one day to Quartzsite, in spite of the, all the people around and the many humongous uh, trailers and Class A RVs, motor homes and things, just come to the RTR and enjoy the community feeling. This video today is going to be long but very juicy because I am going to show you what the, the, the RTR was divided in two parts. So the first two days was exclusively for women. And if you're a guy and before you get offended or excluded, just know that many topics were discussed like uh, women's hygiene and things like that, that would have been a little bit embarrassing to discuss in front of a, a co-ed audience. So don't get offended. We women needed a little bit of that, just not to leave you out, just because we needed to talk about some private things that only happen to women. Actually, it was not that much of that, but it was very interesting. So I want to show you some of the things that were discussed because nobody's going to get embarrassed by seeing them in a video in the privacy of their homes. So it was good, it was healthy, it was generous to give women that space because women, we are confronted, for example, with the idea, and mostly from our friends and family who love us dearly, we are confronted with this question, but you're a woman and you're alone on the road, aren't you afraid, afraid that someone may do something to you? It's dangerous, you shouldn't be there. Uh, that is something that needs to be discussed that women need to feel empowered to do things. I have never felt threatened on the road in all these months. If I don't like a place, if I don't like the people around me, I just drive away. I don't stay there. Having the possibility of going from my bed to the driver's seat and going away that is one of the best things I, I decided for my peace of mind. But I never needed to do it. In my original thought, it was trying to run away from a bear, trying to open my car, <laughs> which is absolutely a stupid, silly 
scenario that is never going to happen. But it happens to be something that is related to security. And uh, it was good to at least have that uh, consideration that if anything happens, I can drive away. In spite of what you are going to hear in the video, I insist. I am against weapons. I am against that. I believe in destiny. So if anything is going to happen to you, it's going to happen to you regardless of how many weapons you have with you. Think of the poor people in, on the Titanic. Uh, I don't want ice in my drink. But hey, they had a lot of ice anyway. So what I say is, we can only control so much. I don't like to be a control freak. I don't like to have control over everything. Sometimes it's nice to just sit and observe how things happen and why. So in, when it comes to weapons, we, we can defend ourselves excellently by just driving away. Because there is always a gas station nearby. You go in there, you ask for help or call 911 or something. But that is enough. I discussed with people there. I said, if you have a knife, just in case someone attacks you, any person that tries to attack me is going to be stronger than me. So they are going to take my knife away from me. And now they have the knife. And they are going to attack me with that knife. So if I have a knife, if I have a gun, it's very possible that someone will attack me with my own weapons. So I don't believe in that. I don't believe we need to have weapons to defend ourselves. Let's just be intelligent about where we are, know your surroundings, know where you are at. And if you are late in the day and you haven't found a place to stay, instead of going into a dark area, go to a gas station and say, can I please overnight here? Because you are going to be safer among truck drivers than in the middle of an area you don't know. So let's take a listen to what was discussed in the Women RTR. And, um, and after that, uh, you will be able to form your own opinions. The RTR is an ex amazing resource for you to learn a lot, to develop your ideas in terms of nomadic life, and maybe to help you just take the plunge. It's full of pressure and it's full of humidity. And what will happen over the day when a tornado or a severe storm is going to hit is that that pressure will drop. So you will have less pressure outside your body than inside and you might feel a little bloaty. But the, the four things that are required for a storm to develop are moisture or humidity, instability, which is the lowest layers of the air mass, um, be, uh, they're so warm and humid. And, and that humid, warm air wants to rise. And what will happen is if there's a cool, dry front coming in from off the Rockies, they slide down the front of the front range and they come over, and then that warm, moist air will come up from the Gulf, from the south. And that's why Tornado Alley has so many tornadoes. But during Dixie Alley season, it's coming up off the Gulf right next to the coast. And when those things happen, when that cold air runs over the top of the warm, rising air, it will... It, there's a there's instability there and then the next thing is that you've got that lift that's the third thing that you're going to have of the the rising air and as the sun comes out during the day that's called diurnal convection it just means the sun is heating up the ground and that air is rising and that's why most storms that become severe don't initiate until later in the day occasionally they will happen early in the morning and more scarily they will also happen after dark 
the, the most dangerous storms to anyone, whether they're sticks and bricks or nomadic, are nighttime storms because A, you can't see them coming, and B, a lot of people are asleep. So that's when most people die in storms. The fourth thing that we need for truly severe weather that will cause tornadoes is shear. And you'll hear them talk about that sometimes on weather reports. Shear means way up there where there's a lot of air moving. Um, this morning you can feel the air is coming, the, the ground surface winds are coming from this direction. But I've been watching and up there it's moving in exactly the opposite. You can see a little piece of scud here moving over. That means there's, there's uh, instability between the ground and up there. And what happens is when it flows at a different direction up there than down here, it's called shear. And what it's doing is going to shear off the tops of clouds. Really big, they're called cumulonimbus clouds. What they'll do is have a very flat bottom that looks really dark gray because they're very thick with, with rain and they're just waiting to, you know, condense enough to drop rain. And when those get really nasty and go up really high, you will see them flatten out on the top because what they're doing is hitting what's called the tropopause and that's between our lower atmosphere and the stratosphere. Once they hit that, it's so cold up there that it's like below zero and the temperatures changing up there between that and the, the hot, moist uh, air in the cloud, that's when you're going to get severe instability and that's when the storms initiate. If you ever are off in the distance, you will see one of those clouds. It'll be flat on the bottom, it'll come up like this, and it'll be flat on the top like an anvil. Those are dangerous clouds, but the really dangerous ones are when you see that flat top and you see a bubble coming up in the middle. That's called when it's breaking the cap. That means there's such a strong updraft, it's going up into that really cold air and you will almost certainly have very, very violent storms at that point. So watch those clouds, they're gonna tell you what to do. Those clouds, those cumulonimbus that are flattening out on the top and popping, those are called supercells. Those are the only clouds that will spawn a tornado. Okay, there, there are other kinds of things that'll look like tornadoes, but they're not. But supercells are what you wanna watch for. How many of you have a radar app on your phone? Those of you with your hands down, get one. They're free, they're your friend, and you need to learn how to read those. If you do not have a radar app on your phone, you are asking to get very, very hurt or killed because we are out here on wheels and they will come. And the biggest problem for us as nomads is we tend to congregate in the very places where most of this activity happens right at the time that it really gets wrapped up. So if you are running around with no weather app on your phone, seriously, you're asking for trouble. Have a purpose built shelter, unless they're in like Texas, most of them that I've been to do. The first thing you do when you go into an area where you think there could possibly be severe weather, when you're checking in, ask where their storm shelter is. Just ask. You're gonna be horrified to find out that a lot of them don't know the answer to that. Give them a problem about that. They should have a problem with not being able to tell you how to stay safe. And if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, make your comments. Maybe you disagree with me and I would be delighted to have that conversation. Uh, please subscribe if you're new to the channel or share the video with someone that may be considering a nomadic life. I am liking it and I like having you here. So thank you for being here. See you soon. Every time